<laughs> Kai. Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth. I just wanted to film a quick intro for my video and of course as soon as I sat down to film my daughter who I thought was asleep, I literally just put her down. Um, it's not. She's at partying. She's doing her new favorite thing. Let me show you on the monitor. It's actually kind of funny. Called beating at the wall. And she has an M. I don't know if you guys can see this. Ooh, this M right here that she tries to hit. We need to lower her crib so that she can't reach that. So I'm going to go try and lay her down and then I'll be back. Be right back, guys. Okay. I think she's down. Fingers crossed. I'm going to go ahead and film the video for you guys. So, like I said, we're going to be talking about jaundice in newborns. Now, I want to go over the basic physiological concepts of jaundice, and this is going to be very, very basic, and then we'll go on to our Billy Blanket experience and how everything went when we went home with the Billy Blanket. So, jaundice is caused by excess waste product in the bloodstream, known as bilirubin, building up and not being properly excreted. It causes a myriad of symptoms, which I will go over, and in very severe cases when the jaundice is incredibly severe and the bilirubin is incredibly high, it can cause brain damage, which is why we care about it, okay? So red blood cells are being broken down in a baby pretty quickly. Uh, faster than an adult for quite a few reasons. Now, number one, trauma from birth. So even if your birth was not a traumatic one, meaning that there was no emergency for you or for baby, and everything went smoothly, just being born can be a little bit traumatic. So if baby comes really quickly, there can be bruising. If you push for a long time, there can be bruising. If the doctor has to use vacuums or forceps to deliver you, there can be bruising on the baby. Um, if baby's coming down a little bit crooked and then writes themselves, they can have some swelling and some bruising possibly. So all of these things are going to cause your red blood cells to break down faster. Additionally, delayed core clamping, which has been shown to have many, many effects and many, many positive effects. And the, those positive things definitely outweigh this negative. But delayed cord clamping does put more red blood cells into the baby's body. And those red blood cells are going to be broken down just like a normal 120 day cycle for red blood cells in an adult body the baby's body is constantly recycling red blood cells as well so that all being said we are having an increased breakdown of red blood cells these red blood cells are being broken down and processed by your liver and the liver excretes the waste products from the red blood cells and the waste products are the bilirubin among some other things, I'm sure, but the bilirubin is what we're going to focus on here. That red blood cell is being broken down. You've got the bilirubin and your liver is immature, so it's having a hard time breaking down those red blood cells and getting rid of that bilirubin. So your red blood cells are getting broken down pretty quickly because of trauma, because of increased red blood cells in a baby, etc., etc. Your liver isn't doing a good job of getting rid of the waste product and then if baby is breastfeeding and isn't getting a large amount, there can be issues there too because once the liver breaks down those red blood cells, your body then excretes the breakdown product of the bilirubin in the urine and the feces. So if baby is not taking in a lot, they're not going to be peeing and pooping a lot and therefore you're going to have a problem with the bloodstream having a lot of that bilirubin, that waste product in it that is not being excreted. So when that happens, you're going to be jaundiced and that is kind of the basic metabolic and physiological parts of being jaundiced. Another thing that can cause babies to be jaundiced is what we call an ABO incompatibility. So if mom has a O or a negative RH blood type and the baby is positive or, or an A and a B and mom is O, the ABO incompatibility, then mom's body can actually make antibodies against baby's body 
against baby's red blood cells and so when baby is born those antibodies actually work to break down the red blood cells faster causing more of that waste product causing more of a jaundice so if you are a negative blood type or an O blood type chances are they will have tested baby's blood to see what baby's blood type is and they will also have tested for um, DAT if baby is DAT positive, then they do have those antibodies in their blood type and baby is more likely to be jaundiced. So something else that can be an issue, obviously, is just prematurity. If a baby's premature, obviously their liver is even more underdeveloped. They're going to have more issues feeding. That can also lead to jaundice and they treat jaundice earlier in babies who are premature. So signs of being jaundiced in a newborn, obviously we've already talked about being yellow. Typically that yellowness is going to start at the top of the head and move its way down and as baby gets less jaundice it'll actually work its way back up which is kind of cool. So you might notice yellowness in the whites of the eyes as one of your first symptoms of being jaundiced and then again as one of your last symptoms as they're getting better. It will kind of persist throughout the whole course of treatment. Drowsiness is another one and poor feeding and sucking kind of goes along with that drowsiness which obviously is helping nothing because you need baby to nurse, 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 nurse to get rid of that extra bilirubin in their pee and their poop and they're like, ugh, I'm not hungry, ugh, I'm too tired. So they're not eating which is just compounding the issues. You might also notice a lack of poops and peas kind of stemming back to that not eating and then when they do poop it's more of a pale poop and when they do pee it's a dark urine as opposed to a clear urine. So now that we've talked about the pathophysiology and the signs and symptoms and all that good stuff let's go on ahead and talk about our story. So my daughter Marion was born at 39 weeks so she was considered full term not premature. She had a relatively untraumatic delivery. She did have a little bit of bruising on her head just from coming down a little bit crooked but we had a pretty significant family history of my husband being significantly jaundiced. Now he and I are both a positive blood type, so May is also a positive, so there was no issue with ABO incompatibility. And he did not have an issue with ABO incompatibility with his parents either, but he was so jaundiced that he almost had to have a blood transfusion to get rid of that extra bilirubin in his blood. So we had a feeling May might end up a little bit jaundiced. They did her first test at about 24 hours and her bilirubin was eight. So bilirubin uh, exists on a scale and you, your bili and I'll, I'll put in a picture of the graph right here because it's kind of hard to explain. So as you saw from the graph, basically the older you are, the higher your bilirubin can be and it not be an issue and you're gonna have low risk, medium risk, high risk, and like danger zones. So that's how they look at it and that's how they treat it. So eight at 24 hours was high risk, but nothing that they would treat right now. We went ahead and we went back to the doctor the very next day. Now we went back to the doctor the next day after being discharged. May's weight was down 9.7%, so she had had some significant weight loss even though she had been eating well and peeing and pooping. My milk just wasn't quite in yet. And her bilirubin, I went and got all of our records last time we were at the pediatrician. Her bilirubin was, let's see, her bilirubin was 15.2. So ideally we want that to be much lower. Uh, it wasn't so high that they needed to treat at that exact moment, but it was something that we were going to check the next day. So by the next day, she had gained four ounces, so my milk had come in, which was fabulous. And she, to me, she looked less yellow. She definitely did. She was eating really good. She was peeing and pooping. But when we rechecked it, her bilirubin was actually 17.5, which is very, very high. So... Since it was creeping towards that danger zone and she was eating well and peeing and pooping, we decided, the pediatrician decided, that she needed a little extra help. And that's where the Billy Blanket comes in. Blanket or the Billy Lights, which sometimes you have to use if your Billy Ribbon is too high, the baby might actually get readmitted to the hospital. And you'll, the blue lights all work the same. Basically, they take that Billy Ribbon and they process it and so it is easy for the body to excrete it. They basically help the liver along and change that bilirubin into a different form of itself so that it can be processed by your body and excreted in the pee and the poop. So the pediatrician is going to use all of the clinical evidence 
for your baby. So are they term? Are they eating well? Are they gaining weight? And how high the bilirubin is compared to how old they are? And use all of that clinical information to decide how to best treat your jaundice. So because May, because of how the level of her bilirubin and she was eating well and gaining weight and she wasn't premature, everything else clinically looked very good for her. We were able to use the Billy blanket at home. We rented the Billy blanket from a medical supply rental company. They actually delivered it to our house, showed us how to use it and took it away. So I'm going to insert a picture of what the Billy blanket looked like. Basically, May wore it underneath of her clothes. It had the blue light on her back wrapped around her and then it had a tail connecting to the machine. So th that was her Billy Blanket experience. And she was in that pretty much 24 seven. We really only took it off if we needed to change her outfit, but otherwise we totally kept it on the whole time. And that is the best way to help get rid of that extra bilirubin. If you leave it on as much as possible, you feed the baby as much as possible, then they're going to pee and poop out that extra bilirubin. Okay, sorry for the change up. I had to charge my battery a little bit. Anyway, so May was born on the 7th. On the 10th is when we got that original elevator result of 15.2. And then on the 11th is when we got the result of 17.5 when we started the Billy Blanket. So we did the Billy Blanket the whole day of the 11th. We went back in on the 12th, we got tested again, we did the Billy Blanket for the whole day of the 12th, and then on the 13th we got the results from the 12th, and the results were that her Billy Rubin had come down to 15.6, so that was wonderful. And with how old she was then, we were able to take her off of the Billy Blanket, and then 24 hours afterwards we did a rebound Billy Rubin check to see if off of the Billy Blanket was she still able to maintain and decrease that excess Billy Rubin as she was. So on the 14th, her Billy Rubin was 12.4, so she was able to keep metabolizing and getting rid of that extra bilirubin and so we were no longer needing to test after that that was like her last prick and her poor little feet after this were just like all tore up but she's nine months old now and her feet are fine so it all worked out okay so I apologize if there's been tons of lighting changes throughout this video one my child took a really long time to go down so I was in and out of here doing that two um it's now raining it was sunny when I started and three my camera died so I had to charge the battery I uploaded some footage that's why my computer's right there and now we're gonna go ahead and finish up so some tips that I had for dealing with a billy blanket is one keep it on as much as they tell you to do that's really important the more exposure the baby gets to the billy blanket the better this goes the same for if you're in the hospital dealing with the billy light keep the baby under it for as much as possible if you're able to hold the baby under the lights while you feed even you will need sunglasses for that that is also helpful um, so use it as much as possible Feed the baby every two to three hours and feed as much as possible. Before my milk came in with that significant weight loss and our increased bilirubin, I was actually pumping after feeding per my lactation consultant's recommendation until my milk came in. Then I stopped because you don't want to pump too much after feeding in the early days or you can cause an oversupply. But I was pumping and giving her that little bit of extra so those are all really important things. Pretty obvious with the Billy Blanket. They're gonna give you plenty of instructions when they bring it to your house. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys and gave you a little bit of an explanation about your baby's increased Billy Rubin if it's something that you're dealing with and how to use the Billy Blanket. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.